Welcome to the first look of Total War Rome Remastered. We've given the classic 2004 game a makeover, along with a bunch of tweaks and new features. The first difference is, I'm not playing as Rome. Along with the original three Roman families, you can now play as one of 16 other factions that get unlocked as you conquer them in campaign mode. I'm playing as Gaul, who were always capable of giving the Roman Empire a run for their money, but in this game, I'm going further with a rush to Rome to take and hold the Eternal City in 30 turns. To do this, I'm going to try and deliver a sucker punch that catches Rome off guard, but it could also be a total suicide mission. Let's find out which. The backbone of Gallic armies are the Warband, lightly armoured units of angry Gauls backed up by heavier swordsmen and barbarian cavalry. Although their morale is generally pretty good, Gallic armies face a number of drawbacks against their more well-trained Roman adversaries. Whereas Roman infantry units have a few spears they can lob at the enemy before they engage, the warband do not, and, unsurprisingly for a bunch of half-naked men, their armour value is pretty poor. In my rush to Rome, I wouldn't have time to build the tier 3 buildings needed to train elite Gallic troops. So, along with the superior bravery of my men, I'm going to rely on overwhelming numbers to thrash my enemies. But to do that, I'll need a strong economy. Okay, so, let's start by looking at the world as we know it. This new map overlay has been created, allowing us to quickly get an overview of the entire game map. We've got options to show levels of security, satisfaction, development, and a few others. The starting territory for Gaul is pretty generous, We've got our heartland here, in central Gaul made up of four regions, with two more provinces at Mediolanum and Patavium, and an outpost here at Numantia. My strategy is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to develop Mediolanum and Patavium as purely military provinces and build my main army there, and devote my heartland to building a strong economy that can support my huge armies. The new building browser shows me my options for trade and economic buildings, and I'm going to prioritise the traders building line, as they offer a pretty good increase in taxable trade income. That's going to leave my heartland quite vulnerable, so I'm training a few diplomats to go out, secure trade deals, and make sure I'm best friends with all my neighbours. All of my neighbours, that is, apart from one, Spain, who I'm going to invade. Sorry, Spain. From the map information I've got about Spain, I can see a lot of silver, which when I build mines on them, will fill up my coffers quite nicely. Okay, it's turn 9 and my invasion of Spain is underway. Spain has just finished fighting a war against Carthage, so their armies are pretty depleted. Although, it looks like there's a couple of Spanish armies here trying to cut me off. So, let's do what Gauls do best. The main Spanish army is running up to take a strong defensive position on the hill, but I'm going to use the cover of the woods to move my army up the hill and outflank them. There's some small resistance from a few skirmishes, but my cavalry can take care of them. It's a long, hard march up this hill, but my guys are made of strong stuff and they won't mind. And once I'm in position, the Spanish can't do much to hold me back. As a full weight of my army bears down on them, it's not long before they all run for it. It's end of turn 14 and I've mopped up the rest of the Spanish settlements without much resistance. Although I do know I have a border with the Carthaginians in Cordoba, so I'm going to form an alliance with them to stop any distractions while I set my eyes on Rome. So with all those riches rolling in from my Spanish conquest, I've been upgrading my central regions with traders, markets and roads. A new feature of Rome Remastered is the Merchant. Merchants are available through the market building, with each settlement able to support three merchants. I can send them to other settlements I have trade rights with to generate income, but I'm going to send mine directly to occupy these resources, which will give me a monopoly on their trade. Merchants, diplomats, spies. I've got a lot of agents out in the field. Some of the new features makes it really easy to keep up with who everyone is and where they're at. The quick list gives me a rundown of units and events for mine and other factions. I can also use this agent panel to quickly send my diplomats and spies off on missions. Turn 23, my two military capitals are developing nicely and I've built a strong military infrastructure. Before I can train any more troops in them, I'm going to build a blacksmith, which will give my weaponry an extra point of damage. As my units lack any real armour, they're going to need all the help they can get. It's turn 26 and I'm nearly ready to launch my attack on Rome. 
My Spanish army has built up a lot of invaluable experience during the Peninsula campaign, so I'm going to use them in my battle for Rome. I've used the auto merge button to merge some of my more depleted units, and I'll top up my army with mercenaries. I'm on the eve of victory, but things are starting to fall apart. The Julii are poised to take Mediolanum and Batavium, and I've got a Britannic force about to tear through my heartlands and Gaul. Nothing I can do about it though, so onwards to Rome. Here we are, turn 29 and I've made it to Rome. I've got a lot riding on this, so let's hope I can pull it off. So, here we are, barbarians at the gates of the Eternal City. To get through these fortifications, I've built a battering ram and four siege towers. I'm sending two towers to an unguarded stretch of wall, but things aren't off to a good start when my battering ram is destroyed before it even reaches the gates. I'm sending a unit of swordsmen to an unguarded gatehouse to create another entry point, while with one tower left at the main gates, my heavy infantry make short work of the archers on the ramparts. Just as my warband make it through the second gate, elite Praetorian cavalry charge them down. I've captured the main gates, and my men are making their way through the back streets, meeting stiff resistance. Fortunately, my reinforcements made it to the main square, where they enter a meat grinder of melee combat. And, despite a last minute Roman infantry charge, my strength in numbers wins out, and Rome is mine. Well, I did it. Rome in 30 turns. But at what cost? I've lost three major settlements, and my empire is starting to crumble elsewhere. But still, Without Rome, there are no Romans. <laughs>